Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And as someone who grew up in the 1990s, I can attest that that world was a unique era for many. And I'm not just talking about the fashion, the pop culture trends, the geopolitics, or the lack of broadband internet. The 90s has become one of those eras that you just see differently with each passing year. For some, it was the last truly great era, the final taste of stability before the chaos of the 2000s took hold. For others, it was a time where everyone became more detached and distant, completely losing themselves in a world rich in style, but utterly lacking in substance. Everyone navigated it in their own unique way. And now that 90s nostalgia is starting to take hold, I think it's worth revisiting. Because there are both lessons and insights from that era that are even more relevant today than they were in the 90s. And if that era had a voice, a face, and an overall demeanor, it would be Daria Morgendorfer. I know that's a bit hyperbole, singling out a single character, let alone an animated character from a 90s cartoon on MTV. But there are just some characters that transcend the show they're on or the period when they were relevant. And I strongly believe that Daria is one of those characters. Because if you had cable TV in the late 90s, you probably remember her and her now iconic monotone voice. For five seasons on MTV, back when MTV was actually relevant in pop culture, mind you, she offered a different kind of show for this unique era. It was a comedy, but not in the quirky, zany mode of The Simpsons. It was mature, but not in the gritty, in-your-face sense a la Batman. You could watch it as a kid and still laugh. You could also watch it as a teenager and relate. Even as an adult, you could watch it and appreciate it because this show offered a distinct kind of humor and entertainment value, one that Daria herself perfectly embodied with her exceedingly dry sense of humor. It's one of those shows that's hard to describe to other people who haven't heard of it. And believe me, I've tried. Daria Morgendorfer, the character, is the central figure of Daria, the show. And the world within that show was essentially peak 90s. And by that, I mean it reflected a lot of the ideals at the time. To explain, I'm going to give a general overview of the structure. I know I've done so in previous videos, but I think it helps to have a quick refresher. In the show, Daria is the oldest child of an upper middle class family all of which have wildly different personalities compared to her. Her mother, Helen Morgendorfer, is this extremely driven, high-strung professional modern woman. Her father, Jake Morgendorfer, is an erratic, emotional mess of a man, always trying to play a role, but always being held back by his many insecurities. And her younger sister, Quinn, is the personification of superficial, self-obsessed narcissism. But outside Daria's family, everyone else in this world is an extreme personality in some form or another. You've got airhead jocks, airhead teenagers, touchy-feely teachers, wannabe rock stars, and so much more. Too many for me to list. But together, they build a world that embodied the best that the late 90s, early 2000s could offer. A world that seemed to have endless opportunities for self-realization. But then, in the middle of it all, you have Daria Morgendorfer, detached, distant, and utterly alienated from it all. Most of the show's humor and narrative stems from her mentality. Around her, these strange and quirky situations unfold, scenarios that don't feel completely absurd, even in a cartoon. But Daria, with a perfect mix of cynicism, realism, and wit, would just break it down exposing every flaw, wart, and absurdity for all to see. She was never mean or judgmental about it. She never scolded people or denigrated them for what they did or why they did it. She just called it out for what it was and let the world around her react. It might not have made Daria a lot of friends in the show, but for all those who watched it, that made her the voice of an emerging spirit, one that felt real, honest, and genuine. Over the course of the show, Daria's voice is often the wet blanket that wakes everyone up from their fever dream. A slap in the face for those who lose themselves in the magical thinking of the era. At a time when everything seemed possible, she often offered a harsh but necessary counter to it all. And the way she went about it 
was often endearing and funny. In most episodes, especially during the first three seasons, she and her friend Jane are the only objective minds in this blatantly subjective world. They're not completely cold or callous. They do get plenty of chances to develop and grow, as teenagers often do. They even get chances to deal with serious personal issues, the kind that really test their cynical mindsets. But of all the episodes that test Daria and her jaded outlook, of all the plots that shaped, strained, and frustrated her character throughout five seasons and multiple movies, one episode stands out more than most. And that episode is Season 5, Episode 65, Boxing Daria. For me personally, this was a defining episode for Daria, both for the character and the show. It also offered a unique perspective of the era in which this show emerged. To understand why, I'll need to break down the plot. So, spoiler warnings ahead for a show that came out in the late 90s. I know, but still, I'm trying to be courteous here. It starts with the Morgendorfers getting a new refrigerator after the old one breaks down. A mundane task for any upper middle class family. But in discarding the oversized box it came in, Daria starts to recall some troubling memories. And they all center around her parents fighting. Now that in and of itself isn't too unusual. Helen and Jay clash frequently throughout the show, and it hasn't really bothered Daria to this point. But within these memories, there's something about it that hits a bit harder. Because they're fighting about her. Within that memory, there's a painfully clear problem. Her parents just don't know how to deal with her. They don't know how to handle her. Daria is just so different. She doesn't play well with others. She doesn't get along with other kids. She doesn't even get along with other adults. In fact, her younger self is remarkably similar to her teenage self. Detached, cynical, and not at all inclined to change for the sake of others. And her parents, who have their own lengthy list of personal issues, are at a complete loss. And all a young Daria Morgendorfer can do to cope is crawl into a box and read. For a show full of satire, cynicism, and over-the-top personalities, this hit pretty hard. Because by this point in the show, we're used to seeing Daria just shrug off serious issues that would overwhelm most teenagers. But this time, she's not just deeply affected by these memories, she's downright vulnerable. Later on in the episode, Quinn and her parents keep trying to throw the box away, but Dara keeps bringing it back. She doesn't say anything in doing so. She doesn't even argue with anyone because she really doesn't have to. For once, Daria's actions speak a lot louder than her words. Eventually, her parents confront her about this and they're able to confirm parts of those memories. It's true. They did have a big fight because of her. And at one point, her father stormed out of the house and stayed a night at a motel. Then, the next day, he came back and everything returned to normal. They were all content to forget about it. But Daria remembered. And in remembering it now, she comes to a realization that's nothing short of heartbreaking. She believes she's the reason for that fight. She believes she's the cause of so much grief. It wasn't because of anything she did. It was just because of who she is. And that affects her. A lot. So much so that she opts to drive off and join her boyfriend, Tom Sloan, for the weekend. But before she can even get there, she's in an accident. It's not severe, but it does affect her in a major way. Later, after Daria makes her way to a diner, she calls Jane and they meet up. And the first thing Daria does is hug her. That too is a huge deal because Daria Morgendorfer is a lot of things. A hugger is not one of them. After nearly five seasons of the show, this is probably the most sentimental she's ever gotten. It's just one of the many things that makes this episode so powerful. But it's what Jane says that really helps complete the narrative of this episode. She reminds Daria that, as difficult as things often seem with her parents, it's still a two-way street. Yes, she gives them grief, 
and they give her grief. That's what parents and teenagers do. And that memory is a harsh reminder of sorts. It can be difficult, your brain letting you know that you don't always affect people in a way you like. And other people will affect you just as much, even people you love. And in light of all this, it's easy to overlook the fact that, as difficult as Daria can be, her parents never give up on her. They never stop trying to affect her in a positive way. Despite all her quirks and weirdness, they still make the effort. And that is worth acknowledging. In the end, that's exactly what Daria does. When she returns home, she has an overdue heart-to-heart -heart with her parents. There aren't many of these moments throughout the show, but that just makes this one so much more meaningful. Daria finally takes a moment to express appreciation and gratitude to her parents, acknowledging outright that she was a difficult child, and she still is. In addition, both Helen and Jake admit their own shortcomings. Because it's not easy being parents to a girl like Daria, someone who's so different in how she does things. But that doesn't stop them from loving her. And it doesn't stop them from trying their best with her. It's a powerful sentiment, one that even Quinn helps them realize. And keep in mind, Quinn spent the first four seasons denying that Daria was even related to her. But in this episode, she ends up doing something that's incredibly, uncharacteristically kind. She doesn't just help fill in the blanks of Daria's memory. She even retrieves the box that triggered this whole thing, knowing that it means something to Daria. To this day, this episode still resonates with me. It helped me appreciate my own parents, and it helped me realize that I too was difficult when I was young. But more than anything else, it gave us some genuine insight into Daria Morgendorfer, which counts as a huge accomplishment given her misanthropic attitude. It also reveals some of the larger complexities behind her cynicism and sarcasm. And it's here where I think Daria, the character, perfectly embodies the era she came from. For most of the show, she's uncompromisingly blunt, calling out the shallow, vacuous absurdities of the world around her. Remember, this world was supposed to be the best anyone could hope for. A nice house, a normal family, and every opportunity to succeed. But all that promise is only on the surface. It's just so enticing that nobody wants to look beneath that surface, if only to avoid any ugliness or unpleasant truths. But Daria was never afraid to point any of that out. But what was far less obvious was how it affected her. Yes, she carries herself as this cold, callous teenager, not at all appreciating the picturesque life around her. But beneath that attitude is a burden, one that everyone has to bear, whether they know it or not. Because even a life within this ideal upper middle class setting, things can still suck. Parents can still fight. And kids can still be responsible for that fighting. They can't help but be affected by the world around them no matter how detached or cynical they may be. But at the end of the day, we can still make the effort to affect one another in a positive manner. It's not always easy. People can be inept, difficult, dense, or just plain overwhelmed. Being in an affluent setting in a prosperous era doesn't change that. It just makes the surroundings more pleasant. For kids in the 90s, as well as adults today, I believe that's a critical perspective, one that's easy to forget in our constantly changing world. The 90s might seem like a golden age for some and a failed promise for others. But no matter who you were or where you were for that matter, you still can't escape your problems. And you can't escape the flaws, failures, and absurdities of the world around you. The best you can do, the only thing you can do really, is not let it impact you more than it has to. No matter what era you live in, you can still make it more bearable. Whether that means acknowledging how difficult you are for others or how others were difficult for you, you still have that ability. Throughout the course of the show, Daria Morgendorfer navigates a chaotic world, but she's able to endure it with her uniquely cynical wit. 
but as jaded as she might seem, she still grew and evolved along the way. She met new people, people who made her life suck less, people who helped her grow, whether she cares to admit it or not. In this episode, Boxing Daria also revealed how much that world impacted her. It wasn't always pretty, but it was an experience that was still worth having. Even by the end of the episode, Daria is still Daria, but she's a lot more self-aware now and more appreciative of those around her. Her parents and sister may often seem like burdens, but when the going gets tough, they're still there for her. And in this sick, sad world, that's an important lesson, both for kids of the 90s and for everyone around today. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks again for joining me in my sick, sad world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care and stay safe.